Our next speaker comes to you uh, via pre-recorded broadcast from yesterday. She wanted to be with us. Amazingly, the IT support within the ghettos of Sao Paulo, Brazil, were adequate, but we had trouble here. So we pre-recorded that uh, for you. Alberta Spriafico, I first met, continuing our Italian theme, at the United Nations, where I was working with an empowerment group about maternal health. And uh, their goal, our goal, perhaps all of our goals, uh, should be to improve the, the very challenging situation when folks are pregnant outside of a developed uh, zone in this. So the, where the mortality is perhaps 200-fold or 2,000-fold greater than what it is here. And I noticed Alberta was always the one that everybody knew in the audience. She had the answers. She connected people. She empowered individuals when I needed to talk to the... Ecuadorian uh, administrator, she called the ambassador by his first name and he came immediately. Alberta will talk about uh, empowering those who are the hardest to empower, those in the most challenging, challenging places on the globe. She's currently in Brazil right now, en route to India, followed by China and then Africa. So short presentation by Alberta Spriofico. Let's look at our planet from space and let's zoom in into Central America and into Nicaragua and its beautiful volcanoes. And let's zoom in further into the rural town of Las Salinas and further into the life of a young woman, Maria. Maria grows up in the rural town of Las Salinas with her extended family. She lives a happy and simple life. She's healthy. Thankfully, because Las Salinas is a four hour drive away from the capital city of Managua, and that road is part dirt, and during the rainy season, it risks becoming a river. If Maria ever needed to get to a well-equipped hospital, it would take quite some time. In the town of Las Salinas, there is one health post staffed with one doctor and two nurses, all very committed to cover the needs of a population of 5,000 members. At the age of 18, Maria becomes pregnant. Her nurse, Marta, files her pregnancy as Marta records and monitors every pregnant woman in the area. Everything seems to be going just fine. Yet, before Maria goes into labor, she hemorrhaged significantly, and both she and her baby died. Now what happened? Maria had the very common experience of a placenta previa. The placenta is malpositioned, preventing the normal delivery of the baby. Now, in other areas with better access to healthcare diagnostics, this would be easily early diagnosed and then Maria would have had a C-section. Maria did not have this opportunity. This could have been prevented, yet this happens every minute. Literally, the World Health Organization estimates that at least one woman dies from complications related to pregnancy or childbirth every minute. That is 529,000 women per year. And for every woman who dies in childbirth, about 20 more suffer injury, infection, or disease. That is 10 million women per year. Then, some 1 million children are left motherless. And these children are 10 times more likely to die within two years of the mother's death. Five medical complications account for 70% of maternal death during pregnancy. Yet, the fundamental killer is unavailable, inaffordable, inaccessible, or poor quality healthcare. Now this can change. Let's look at our planet if we focus on maternal mortality rates. Let's look at Africa, look at Asia, but also the United States. It is the country that spends the most in healthcare and yet ranks behind 40 other countries when it comes to maternal survival rates. And what if we look beyond women and maternal mortality? Let's take another example, car accidents, a killer that is increasing worldwide. And let's go to Africa, Mozambique, and the town of Beira. There's a car accident. Ten people are critically injured. An ambulance is able to reach them and take them to the nearest hospital. There is one doctor and three nurses. No diagnostic equipment. Who needs to address first? The doctor feels powerless. Resources are allocated blindly. 
Now in this scenario, the chances of those 10 people surviving drop every second. So if the problem is inaccessible healthcare, will this improve? The data is not reassuring. Take for example, the doctor patient ratios. India, one doctor to an average of 2,000 patients and a lot worse in many rural areas. Brazil, one to 700. Malawi, one to 50,000. And the American Association of Medical Colleges predicts a shortage of 63,000 doctors by the year 2015. Now, there is an evident gap between medical resources, hospitals, doctors, diagnostic equipment, and people living in poverty or critical scenarios, whether urban or rural, whether in Nicaragua, in Africa, in India, in the United States, worldwide. The good news is that this can change. Women need not die in childbirth. Internal injuries can be triaged much more quickly, efficiently, and effectively. Health personnel can be empowered to truly make that difference they aim for. And laymen can do a lot more than we thought possible. And as technology evolves, this will be more and more the case. Healthcare can be made more accessible. How? Well, an answer comes from space. No, really, from space. So, space, quite a remote scenario, right? <laughs> the space station, no diagnostic equipment, no medical personnel. Sounds familiar? Well, it's not Las Salinas in Nicaragua, but some conditions are alike. So a while back, NASA researchers and doctors started training non-medical personnel, astronauts, to use portable ultrasound equipment to be able to perform basic diagnostic exams. They were also enabled to stream those images on an internet website so that a doctor from Earth could remotely guide them. Now they then joined efforts with a global network of doctors who were training non-physicians to use ultrasound. And then I joined the team with a focus on human development in order to take this innovative potential and apply it to enhance access to healthcare worldwide. We have an innovative technology, or better, we have an innovative approach to an ever-evolving technology that opens new realms of opportunities. And is that enough? Are technologies enough to make the difference? Well, no, not if they're used alone. They have to be part of a bigger equation. And our team at Henry Ford and WinFocus have a winning solution. First of all, partnerships. Everywhere we go, we first join efforts with local partners, hospitals, universities, nonprofit organizations, private and public institutions. We literally plunge into the local scenarios. We learn about the community's needs, priorities, values, either directly or through our well-established local partners. We reach the population most in need. And yet, we don't stop there. Because any innovation, in order to truly empower in a sustainable way, has to be integrated in the local national system, policy, and infrastructure. And so we work across the nation, and we work across systems, and we partner with the ministries and the policymakers. Meanwhile, we also work, work internationally and collaborate with the United Nations, the World Health Organization, to redesign policies. And we also work with interdisciplinary research networks and at events like TEDx and online, uniting all to empower all. Second. Think long-term sustainability. Work to truly enable sustainable development and avoid just one-shot rural missions. So what we do is work within and across healthcare systems. We connect rural hospitals to district hospitals to capital hospitals with the telesonography. So the streaming of ultrasound images enables us to educate people in remote scenarios to remotely guide them from a capital hospital and to potentially access a global cloud of health providers. Because if a doctor in the US is not too far from space, no doctor is too far from anywhere else on Earth. Okay, so we integrate the right technology in the adequate location with the active participation of all stakeholders. And then we educate, 
and inspire. So we've developed the adequate curriculum for non-specialist physicians, for nurses, for midwives, for laymen. Scalable education according to the specific context and user holding quality constant. So that for example, Andrea can now do an ultrasound for Zuleni who is now pregnant with her second kid, which she's going to name Livia, while Dr. Pazeli is training her to do one. We can also enable Andrea to take the ultrasound and have the images streamed on the internet website and then diagnosed and assessed by a doctor in the closest clinic. In this way, we can early diagnose placenta previous and we can help save mothers' lives. We also go beyond medical education and we enable people to become managers, coordinators, and each and every person that participates becomes an empowered and empowering development agent. Not everyone is a doctor, yet everyone is a patient. Healthcare is fundamental for us all. Every person that we're working with is enabling a local, national, and global program that is tangibly expanding access to healthcare worldwide in a profound way. How will you?